thank you thank you nihar thank you chairpersons first let me say allowing me to speak thank you dr lotika i will thank diabetes india team dr manoj dr bansi dr arvin sir dr mishra sir dr bharat for inviting me to be part of this uh, grand academic event and i will be talking about smart use of drugs for optimized clinical outcome so we all know that with the advent in our understanding of pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes now we have evolved from the concept of uh, the role of insulin resistance and insulin secretory defect to the ominous octet and we have got an armamentarium of drugs to target each and every pathophysiological defect which is there in type 2 diabetes and that's why now we need to use our agents judiciously and smartly for a good clinical outcome for a given patient we all know that all these agents they have got they are different as far as efficacy side effect profile their effects on hypoglycemia body weight or cardio renal outcomes are concerned and the cost in our country is almost at par with almost all the agents except glp1 analogs which are still costly affair and they are not for their for masses so individualization is the key one size does not fit all be it glycemic target blood pressure target or choosing an agent for a given patient you need to individualize therapy according to the clinical characteristics and requirements of a given patient and that is the concept of personalized medicine giving the right treatment at the right dose for the right patient at the right time and this is for the right outcome we all know that almost all agents they are having equivalent glycemic efficacy when you are adding them on the top of metformin therapy this is the recent real world retrospective cohort data from korea where they have compared various drugs starting from metformin to sulfonylureas dpp4 sglt2 and alpha glucosidase inhibitors and their efficacy is almost equivalent when you are putting them on the top of metformin therapy so i will just go through three or four cases to make you understand that how can we use drugs smartly for a outcome for a given patient so the first case is a 35 year old male cloth merchant who is already following a healthy lifestyle because her mother is already having diabetes hypertension and obesity is detected to have diabetes during routine health checkup he developed genital mycotic infection before one month at that time his blood sugar was 200 so he underwent the health checkup and during that he was detected to have diabetes is worried about weight gain with diabetes therapies because her mother is on insulin sulfonylureas and variety of medications which are contributing to weight gain to her mother bmi is 25 kg per meter square family history i have already highlighted blood pressure is well controlled systemic clinical examination is normal fasting is 135 hbo1c is 7.4 all other parameters are normal ecg is normal and usg is showing fatty liver so how will you treat this patient so we all know about the verified trial which is compared early combination therapy versus sequential therapy and this patient fits clearly in the uh, eligibility criteria of this trial where the patients who were having baseline hb1c were between 6.5 to 7.5 they were included and they were either given metformin vildagliptin from the beginning or they were only given metformin and then vildagliptin was added and this trial had clearly shown that early combination therapy is much much better if you want to have a durability of glycemic control as compared to sequential combination therapy so this patient was started on metformin and gliptin another agent which we can use in this category is pioglitazone which is also a very good agent and we all know that we indians we are having lot of insulin resistance and pioglitazone on metformin these are the two drugs which can act on insulin resistance and adopt has also shown the durability of glitazones are much better as compared to metformin and sulfonylurea when they are used in manotherapy but you have to be wary about side effect profile of pioglitazone and this patient is already worried about side effect profile of the medicines and i think in clinical practice to make patient confident of therapies and to 
develop a rapport with the patient, you need to start therapies which are as per the patient's requirement and as per the patient's clinical needs. So this patient was put on metformin DPP-4 inhibitor. A1C was reduced from 7.4 to 6.4 percent after three months. And after one year, the patient is only on metformin therapy and maintaining HP on below 6 percent with very good lifestyle modification. Now I will move on to the case number two. This is a 55-year-old male, diabetes, hypertension, and dyslipidemia since seven years, and is already on glimepiride 2 milligram with metformin, sustained release 1 gram twice daily, telmisartan with amlodipine daily, and atorvastatin 20 milligram daily. His BMI is 29 kg per meter square. Family history is already diabetes, hypertension in mother, and hypertension, diabetes, and CAD in father. His blood pressure is well controlled. Clinical examination is normal except minimal ankle edema. His fasting is 155, post mill is 255, is doing SMBG, and mostly the post dinner sugars are on the higher side. HVONC is 8.5%. Creatine is normal, EGFR is 72. Urine ACR is 60, that is microalbuminuria. LFT and lipids are normal, ECG is normal. ECHO is showing diastolic dysfunction, mild pH, and minimally large left atrium, suggestive of heart failure with preserve ejection fraction, and USG is showing fatty liver. So if we, if we highlight important points in this patient, is a 55-year-old male, already having diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia. Obesity is there, history of CAD in father, so history of coronary artery disease in family. His EGFR is normal, but he's having microalbuminuria. His HV1C is on the higher side. He's having heart failure with preserve ejection fraction. And he's also having mild NPDR on fundus. Monofilament is normal and USG showing fatty liver. So he's already having uncontrolled diabetes, microvascular complications in the form of retinopathy, microalbuminuria at the same time also having heart failure with preserve ejection fraction. So we all know that the trial, the delivery trial has shown that dapagliflozin can be used in people who are having heart failure with preserve ejection fraction to improve the primary composite outcome as well as the worsening of heart failure events. And this is the candidate who has not been hospitalized for heart failure, but he is at risk of hospitalization for heart failure. And these agents will definitely help in primary prevention of heart failure as per the declared TME data where the Dapagliflozin was used in this garden variety of patients reduce the first hospitalization for heart failure to the tune of 30 to 40 percent. We also know that CKD and heart failure they both go hand in hand. Those who are having CKD are they are at high risk of heart failure and those who are having heart failure they are at high risk of development of CKD and SGLT2 inhibitors are the drug which has got beneficial effects in both these conditions and both the aspects both renal composite outcome as well as heart failure failure related outcomes, they improve with the help of SGLT2 inhibitors, both category of patients in heart failure and in CKD also. And that is irrespective of severity of heart failure or staging of CKD or degree of microalbuminuria. So this patient, also the ADA and ESD, they recommend that patients who are having heart failure, SGLT2 should be preferred. Patients who are having CKD, SGLT2 should be preferred. And our own RSSDI therapeutic will also tells that you have to take into account various aspects which I will touch upon in my third case. So this patient, the glimepiride metformin 2 milligram was continued at morning. At evening, the dose was reduced and he was started on CETA-DAPA combination. Telmisartan was increased to 80 milligram in the view of microalbuminuria the patient is having. Amlodipine continued, atorvastatin continued. Within one month, glimepiride dose reduced to 0.5 milligram daily. MAT, DAPA, and CETA continued. Good glycemic control was maintained without any episode of hypoglycemia. A1C after three months was 7%, creatinine 1.1, EGFR 90. We expect a bit drop in EGFR whenever you put your patients on SGLT2 inhibitors, and then it is going to be sustained. And USCR was 30 milligram per gram percentage. So this was the way the treatment was modified and the clinical outcomes which were required in this patient, that is reduction in microalbuminuria, uh, reduction in the progression of nephropathy, reduction in the risk of hospitalization for heart failure, everything was reduced when you use this kind of combinations and that will give you a better clinical outcome with good glycemic control.
so this is rssdi therapeutic wheel is a best way to use in clinical practice for smart use of oral agents for individualizing therapies so what it is it is a wheel where the central part is lsm that is lifestyle modification that is the center stage of type 2 diabetes management and then after that there is abcd efgh and inside there is a circle where it is written metformin so metformin is to be given to all type 2 diabetic patients except when there is a, a renal compromise when there is ckd then you have to be careful about initiating metformin therapy in type 2 diabetic patients or you have to be careful about the maximum dose of metformin being used in that category of patients and then depending on this parameters you have to choose agents as you go away from the center of the wheel uh, the uh, medicines which are mentioned in the center of the wheel they can be used at the time when like if you see the age the center of the wheel says younger patients so in younger patients you can age, use any of the medications as the age advances the options they go down so extreme age you have to age use agents which are not producing hypoglycemia the same applies for all the spokes of this wheel and this spokes they say a b c d e f g h approach so a is age of the patient b is body weight c is ckd d is duration of diabetes e is established cardiovascular disease f is financial burden g is efficacy or glycemic control and h is hypoglycemia concerns so how can we use this wheel in our clinical practice i will just uh, do a hypothetical case to make understand that how can we use it this is a 48 year old male businessman with type 2 diabetes since 3 years on metformin a1c is increasing to 8.4% is already fed up with lifestyle modification and is also having hypertension on ramipril is not interested in taking any injectables is obese blood pressure is bit on the higher side is also having features of insulin resistance ecg is normal his parameters are fasting of 187 ppg of 294 a1c of 8.4% tg is also on the higher side ldl is 84 and egfr is normal creatinine is normal so whenever you see any patient in your clinical practice you have to take three or four important parameters of that case for here it is the patient is comparatively younger is businessman so affordability is not an issue diabetes of three years so it is early diabetes he declines injectables is obese is also having a borderline hypertension and he is having dyslipidemia in the form of hypertriglyceridemia now these are the features depending on which you have to choose so what is important from the wheel if you see a b and d these are the three important things a is young age b is high bmi and d is short duration of diabetes now if you go through this wheel you will find some options which are there in all these three pox of the wheel and depending on that you can find out the hierarchy of agents which you can use in this patient so first number will come of either sglt2 inhibitor glp1 previously it was injectable now oral is available so sglt2 or oral glp1 that will be number one injectable glp2 should be two dpp4 is three pioglitazone is four and hu is fine so in this patient who is having high hba1c early diabetes i think adding one agent will not be enough so metformin should be increased to at least 2 gram and then you have to add sglt2 with oral semaglutide or sglt2 with dpp4 inhibitor that will bring this patient to the target with additional waste loss without increasing the risk of hypoglycemia so that is the way you can use therapeutic wheel in your clinical practice and that will help you in customizing or individualizing therapy for a given patient last case i will just touch upon that is a 52 year old female already dr alka gandhi talked about sulfonylurea and insulin therapy so she is having diabetes since six years and dyslipidemia since two years currently taking human mixed heart 48 units in the morning and 22 units at night with citaglyptin 100 milligram daily since last two years and insulin was started when she was hospitalized for COVID. Before that, she was well controlled with oral drugs in the form of glimiparide and metformin and DPP-4 inhibitor. She's having some component of neuropathy and particularly 
fluctuating blood sugars with episode of hypoglycemia almost one every two weeks. BMI is high, she is obese. Blood pressure is normal, clinical examination is normal and her sugars HbA1c is 8.4, she is having microalbuminuria. So these are the important points. Can we shift from premix insulin to basal insulin? There is enough data that you can shift patients who are on premix insulin therapy to basal insulin therapy with oral drugs. But this patient was counseled that she is a candidate for basal bolus therapy. We will try with basal plus oral drugs. If they fail, then you, she has to take either basal plus or basal bolus insulin therapy. She was shifted to CETA, DAPA. CETA was continued, DAPA was added, glimepiride was started, Atorva continued, and Glargine 300 was started. And within one week, our parameters become normalized. At the end of three months, A1C was 7.3 percent. So even from twice daily premix, if blood sugar control is not good, you can shift them to basal insulin with good combination of oral drugs, and they are able to maintain good glycemic control without hypoglycemia. CGM is very useful, but this patient was not using CGM. So to conclude, I say these are the parameters which one should keep in mind when treating type 2 diabetic patients and depending on the various parameters, you need to individualize therapy and smartly use drugs to give them good clinical outcomes with good glycemic control. Thank you very much.